single style of play. They're a very cerebral, patient, macro-heavy base team. So when they're ahead, they're incredibly punishing. When they fall behind, they consistently cannot 5v5, so they struggle. That said, Snake have been having serious issues in their own team fighting. Yeah, we'll see whether they can fix them now. As we are into champion select, you can see Gangplank, Jin, and Rek'Sai all banned away on the side of Vici, and it's going to be Vladimir, Lissandra, and Shen that Snake have decided to veto from this game. Quite a few champions left available here. Notably, you know, things like Twisted Fate for Easy Hoon, but Gragas is the one that Vici are going to lock away. No Hecarim Curse to come in for this Vici squad, and Dandy is a phenomenal Gragas player. And it's a very different style of two very different junglers. Again, if Vici are that patient, cerebral team, a lot of it is defined by their jungler and Dandy. World-class jungler, he's very methodical, very patient. What he excels at is gathering information and then punishing teams with the information gathered. On the other side, you have the flashy, the explosive SOFM. He pretty much has one speed, and it's breakneck. And if he doesn't get it, he's going to trip his team up. Well, they were hovering the Hecarim, and that's uh, certainly a champion that can focus on some of the speed. But now looking at Tom Kench, but that was such an incredibly quick lock-in of the Ash. And that's something that we expect Martin to be playing, to be perfectly honest. So Crystal going to try his hand the Frost Arrow Lady, and it's going to be a Tom Kench, possibly towards the bottom side with him. And a lot of teams have been experimenting with this. WE did it. It's how they bested Vici in their best of three, which took them into the semifinals. And you know that Endless is going to take something like the Kogma. Uh, if he doesn't have Ash available. So they're probably predicting that the Kogma is going to be there and saying he's an immobile champion, nail him with the arrow, make that pick. He only has Flash for however long. And also quite item dependent as well. So it's hard to fit in sort of that cheeky uh, QSS somewhere in the build. Can actually put him behind. Is now over the side of Ichi. We'll see what they're going to take away next. Of course, Braum, very strong, still well and truly available. We've seen the frog on the bottom side of the map really start to peek in as far as high priority supports are concerned. The beauty about Tom Kench is you have a lot of low mobility mid laners and AD carries running around. He offers so much safety to both of those positions as well as semi-global presence. And if you have Talia, Twisted Fate, double TP metas and Lissandra coming back into power, Tom Kench fits right in style with those. Well, you can see Vici have locked away there's support in the Braum and the Echo, possibly towards the top side of the map there for long. Of course, I'm remembering back to Flandre playing the champion with his Proto Belt Trinity Force, looking absolutely dominant. But not going to be the case this time, as Lung could be taking it. Of course, Easy Hoon locked it in, and it can be played in the mid lane, but it doesn't really fit into the Easy Hoon wheelhouse. Easy Hoon can play pretty much anything, but he has a relatively small, effective champion pool. Spawn brought up this point on the desk, and I 100% agree and support this. It's that Easy Hoon actually has a very tiny champion pool. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of Lissandra, it's Azir, uh, and Victor, really, are kind of your three champions that you're looking at. The other one that can peek up is that Karma. Well, he did hover a couple of those. Twisted Fate also needs an honorable mention. We'll see whether Easy Hoon decides to switch over to something like that. But it is looking like the Karma and the Civic Karma combination being considered now for Vici. But we did see the Nah and the Malzahar locked in here for Snake. A lot of lockdown and a lot of team fight power here from this team right now. And the LPL is really turning back towards that Nar, even being very confident to blind pick it in a lot of scenarios. It wasn't blind picked uh, this time around but it was by EDG yesterday. NAR has fantastic matchups against pretty much any of the melee top laners in support uh, and can even slow down Aurelia for a time being before she scales past him. Yeah, of course, if you can duck around in that uh, mini NAR form when you are a little bit vulnerable, but that is going to be the Civ Civa Karma locked in. Easy here to take the Karma into the mid lane and Endless back on the Civa. This is actually really important. So we talked about the priority pick of the Ash and Snake Esports possibly trying to uh, force Endless onto his big coveted Kog'Maw pick, but he throws a wrench in their plans and he looks for the Sivir. Now, Endless is not nearly as effective on Sivir as he is on... Yeah, it's the jungle Malzahar. I see your face. As he is so bad. on Ash or uh, Kog'Maw. Well, playing with my heart at the moment is SOFM. Is Jay-Z having a look at Syndra for tank, possibly in the mid lane. We'll see whether it is going to be the Void Master himself wandering around the jungle, looking for ways in it. It is. So, Syndra going to be locked in here for tank. Notices the Karma. Wants to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe as far as wave clear and poke damage is concerned. We'll see whether it is going to work out. Snake 
Switching it up here in the draft. Now, they have played Jungle Malzahar before. It's only been played in this position once throughout the LPL, and it was Snake that played it. SOFM had an incredible performance on it, although it was against Saint, and the game did not mean anything. So we haven't seen it in a best-of-series, and we have not seen it in a high-pressure situation. Now, I like the fact that they're picking up Syndra in tandem with the Malzahar, because what's really important is that they need to bring really hard lockdown to open up gank opportunity and kill pressure when Malzahar doesn't have his ultimate. Yeah, and the single-target lockdown from this team now is utterly phenomenal. Especially considering the fact that they have a Tom Kench, they can use the Abyssal Voyage to get any follow-up for Flandre if they would like to, but Nether Grasp plus Scatter the Weak plus Enchanted Crystal Arrow is just insane for long-range peak potential. And on the other side, you have a lot of kind of AoE spread damage between the Karma and the Sivir. My one concern for Vici is that their composition lacks a little bit of damage. Well, we'll see whether they can build towards it and get a snowball rolling as the coaches shake hands. Let's get into game number one, Vici versus Snake. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, game number one between Vici and Snake to decide who is going to have the highest seed moving into the world's gauntlet. Qualification now on the line, and Vici going to be so hungry this game. We've heard from them multiple times how much they want to prove themselves on the world stage. Well, they're going to have to do this first. Effectively, if I may lose to Team WE in that third place match following this one, the winner of this match will seed directly into the second round of the regional, regional qualifier and will face the winner of I may, again, if they lose, and yep. the loser of this match. So, Could potentially be that rematch of this series as well, so it could be a sign of things to come. Here for Vici and Snake. Just makes it that much easier to represent China on the international stage for that third seed as EDG and RNG are already locked in as representatives. Yeah. So quickly touching on Vici's composition, uh, it's actually very cool. It empowers everything that Vici are really good at, which is uh, moving around the map, making macro base rotations and sieging towers. So they have a ton of mobility between the Sivir, the Gragas, a lot of flexibility to go over walls and the Gragas and the Echo. So they can get around quite quickly and they have great sieging potential. Uh, my concern is, is that come these big 5v5s late game, if that's how late the game goes, they're going to drop off in damage compared to the single target lockdown and all of the damage threats of Snake. Yeah, and I feel like Snake not necessarily going to be winning as far as wave clear in these lanes are concerned, but as far as gank power, they are most certainly capable. But they're not necessarily put down either. Uh, Nar should have the early push on Echo. Ash can compete with Sivir. She's one of the few AD carries that does have great pushing power with the potential of her volley, which is what we're seeing right now is uh, both these teams jockey for lane control and pressure. And Syndra will do decent into Karma, especially if she can threaten with her uh, scatter the weak. So yeah, they might lack a little bit of wave clear, but they're going to meet even pretty strong. Well, we'll see whether it is going to come out ahead here for Snake is SOFM not going to have all that much CC until he hits that level 6 and grabs himself the Nether Grass for a possible opportunity here for Vici early on. Now, one of the big issues with Malzahar jungle is he's actually fairly uh, fragile and kind of uh, brittle in the jungle. Not him taking damage, but invading on him because he doesn't have any of those hard CC abilities. So people like Elise and Gragas can punish him if they invade and use Fog of War correctly. Now, the uh, pros to Malzahar is how quickly and efficiently and healthily he can jungle by using his Void Lanes. Typically, jungle Malzahar is a bit more passive and is more about monster objective control, but SOFM actually plays him quite aggressive and uses his speed in the jungle to counter jungle when appropriate. Well, you can see at the moment, has almost managed a full clear here at 3 minutes and 15 seconds. We'll just be that Raptor Camp, and that won't last very long, but Dandy... Takes down the Rift Scuttler towards the bottom side, and then we'll notice that it is a barren wasteland 
in the jungle on the bottom side here of Snake. But that's okay because Dandy's still just gathering the information to say that SOFM is on the top side of the map so long. You will need to be a little bit careful. The nice thing about Snake's lanes is yes, SOFM doesn't have the hard CC until past level six, but he's got tons of soft CC and scatter the weak as well as the boomerang from Gnar. Yeah. And of course, that wallop, if Flandre does make it to Meganar in the right time as well, as Dark Spear comes down. Tank does get a nice scatter of the week there for the stun, but Easy Hoon, not too worried. But if you check on your map, there SOFM goes. Again, he uses the speed of that Malzahar. He's not scared. He will invade you and chip away at your camps. He'll do this on any champion, and Malzahar fits into that wheelhouse and identity. Whoa, and look at his army going after Dandy here at the same time. They get a few cheeky shots on. Dandy is going to spot that ward as well, as Crystal's going to get eaten before the concussive blows goes off. Nice Tongue Lash. Jay-Z taking a lot of damage, and Vici starting to get the upper hand here in this lane as Flandre goes mega, but doesn't find the trade victory against Long. But it's important that Vici can get the upper hand on the bottom side because Dandy has done a good job tracking and finding where SOFM is. So Endless and Caveman have the uh, opportunity that they can go aggressive knowing there's no gank threat. Yeah, nice Unbreakable from Caveman, though. Denies a lot of the damage here from Snake. As Crystal gets his wave shoved into him. And in fact, Flandre going back, grabbing himself an extra Doran's Blade, feeling the pressure here towards the top side of the map. Even though it's only 27 to 31, still doing fine as far as farm. The teleport's going to be matched here for our top laners. Still very even. We'll check in on itemization if Flandre will be punished for that double Doran's uh, on the first big item back. And if uh, Echo will slowly start to pull ahead in the matchup. Obviously, he has a lot of counterplay in the matchup. It's more about can Gnar successfully kite Echo back. Echo, one of the few melee matchups that can actually be really punishable and dodge a lot of that. Oh, nice snare comes in here as Tank takes a full empowered Q to the face. And here's the rotation from Caveman moving up, getting vision down, wanting to make sure that they know exactly where SOFM's moving on this map, knowing that he will be level six relatively soon. We want to get into these lanes to grasp people up. That R button. And he's closing in to a t uh, 10 CS discrepancy between him and Dandy, as well as that big experience advantage to so level 5 to level 4. He's well ahead of this Gragas. Yeah, so that speed that you were talking about before. Pretty powerful now. Just heads into the mid lane, helps clear this one out. As Tank wants to get himself a free back, has that unleashed power. Wants to make sure that any gank from SOFM is going to be even more important. It's easier than yeah, it just moves. All the way up that lane you to know, try and stop her back. We see so many. Oh, hold on. We see so many mid laners not respect the poke from Karma. They'll love to be obnoxious, just put the shield on themselves, grab the speed up, run, take a tower shot just to throw the Q at you, and mm -hmm. delay back. So if you're against a Karma, doesn't hurt your pride. Just take a step back behind the tower. Don't waste any time. I do like it, though, making sure that Tank is going to miss out on a few of these creeps in the wave. Speaking of creeps in a wave, gigantic. Amount of minions here heading towards the bottom side as Crystal and Jay-Z dealing with them quite nicely for the moment. One of the things that Sivir lacks in compared to Ash, though, is she's not able to punish underneath a turret as well as Ash will with her volley. Obviously, the cool thing about Sivir is when you're farming creeps, you can use your ricochet and also uh, chip away your enemy laners, but you're really just reliant on a single boomerang versus that spread of the cone volley if you shove that wave in to chip at enemy health bars. You can see this bottom lane actually getting close to that level 6 mark on the hunt. And Enchanted Crystal Arrow will be a big deal. We'll see when they actually do turn up as now red buff under fire. SOFM not quite in control here of the top side of the map as there are pings coming down, but he's not going to be able to get in there. And there are two members as Lung has rotated over. And the reason why Dandy's able to do this is because of the... Uh, early invades from Caveman and Dandy to lay down that vision. So the pink ward has been cleared by F SOFM, but with that information, Dandy was able to punish something on the map and is now looking top. Yeah, there's a flash body slam and all too easily picks up first blood there for Vici. Explosive cast just gets picked up and thrown out and destroyed. And that's classic Dandy and why he's a world-class jungler. He gathers information and he will always punish anything that you give him. Just incredible play and so quickly done at the same time. Both the top laner and jungle move towards the top side of the map and instantly take down Flandre and Snake. Looking a little bit out of sorts, but only 100 gold behind. Nothing too worrying is now Crystal just threw out the ultimate and Tank and SOFM looking for more. There's the Hawk shot as Caveman does get out of the way, but Nethergrass comes in and that's going to be SOFM grabbing the kill all too easily. The Malefic Visions. Yeah, but a bit uh, misplayed in terms of 
the micro interactions to not pick up both kills. That should have been fairly easy to grab. SOFM actually only using his ultimate uh, to quickly lock down Braum, probably trying to communicate, you know, I'm going to lock him down, you grab this one, then I'm going to throw out another ability to try to catch Ash, excuse me, Sivir. Yeah. But they only grab one of them, so uh, kind of a best-case scenario for Vici there. Yeah, still able to even things out, as, of course, Crystal now to have a lot of spare time here in this lane. Already ahead by 20 CS as the dust settles. We'll now be going back, and we'll see whether Endless can get himself back up. But Snake, with a quite distinct lead here of about 500 gold, despite the fact that even on kills and first blood, in fact, going over to Vici. And it'll now be a question if Snake can translate this lead into an early Infernal Drake. It's very safe to do with Malzahar because he can get that Void Army in front of him, as well as the uh, superior back and buy for Crystal. So using that extra gold to itemize into 35% attack speed on the Berserker Greaves is actually a pretty big deal come combat stats. Yeah. Getting himself towards what looks like a Runan's Hurricane as his next item after what could be the Essence Reaver or the Infinity Edge, depending on how he's feeling. Haven't seen Crystal for quite some time. See Usually, Crystal's known as kind of that more hyper carry, hard carry oriented uh, AD carry versus Martin. Makes sense that Snake switched to Martin over the course of this last LPL split as more utility driven AD carries were coming to power. Yeah. Sivir, uh, Rai, not Rai, Jin and uh, Ash. Well, Crystal's going to have a little bit of both here as he's on the Ash now. Able to hyper carry quite effectively. There's Abyssal Voyage being looked at, but no. Interesting. That was an odd one. It's fine. He'll have it relatively soon again. Mm -hmm. We're just going to say he was trying to place a ward and I was very misclicked. perplexed. <laughs> it's like Abyssal Voyage. Oh, uh, but, wh but why? So if I'm going to get some vision here towards the top side of the map, though, gives up his position. We'll see whether Vici makes some plays towards the bottom side. Dandy moving down there for the moment, and it is going to be immediate back. Nope. So if I'm just moving himself in, there's a Grom camp to take. He does love these ones. It means that Dandy has two options. He's either going to gank bottom because Tom Kinch and Ash are very far forward, or he's just going to invade and counter jungle. Meanwhile... Yeah, there's the flash ult from SOFM. Flandre picks up the kill all too easily, just waits for the opportune moment to get that auto attack off. And this does put more onus on Dandy to act. It looks like he's going to go all the way around and look for a cheeky gank. There's a lot of pings, but I think Crystal and Jay-Z are pretty wise to what's happening, and they can deny any sort of counterplay from Vici here. Yeah, and they do have the arrow for potential disengage at the same time as Jay-Z is going to eat his AD carry, gets stunned, however, and Crystal's still going to get knocked up by the Glacial Fissure. Endless with the ultimate down. Crystal's going to get exhausted. May need to get out of the way, but there's the explosive casting. He can't do it. He's still kiting. Picks up Endless. Can he get another one? Caveman falls down. It's a double for Crystal. Flashes over Dandy. Hops into the mouth of the Tom Kench, and he'll be safe. Welcome back to the LPL, Crystal. Damn Snake right. has certainly missed you. Uh, massive outplay. I was thinking, Crystal, you know that Dandy's on the bottom bottom side of the map, what are you doing? But ha obviously having the confidence that he can outplay Endless and Caveman and then executes on it brilliantly. That was stunning. Now a 2-0-1 Ash picks himself up his zeal. Another dagger in there as well. Let's have a look at it again. So again, Crystal is sitting in this bush on the pink ward trying to catch Caveman warding. But again, they know that Dandy is on the bottom side of the map. So this is just Crystal going massive. And the... Just the timing of all of his abilities, as well as that heal, just fantastic. Kiting out Caveman. That's only one shot of the concussive blows. Two that he ever takes. And then jumps straight onto his time Kench. Holding his flash long enough to reposition himself into Kench. Just phenomenal. You gotta be frustrated if you're Dandy. Because Dandy could have followed up, but he just had the trust that Caveman and Endless would be able to take care of that 2v1 scenario. Yeah, and a lot of that came down to the fact that Endless didn't have any mana at the same time, so... Possible Boomerang Blade to help take that kill, just not there. It's now Flandre and Long. We're going to have a look at exactly what happened towards the top side. And again, Flandre is put in this winning position to make a 1v1 kill like this because of the repeat ganks that SOFM has given him. And Long, I believe, had his ultimate for that as well, so just wasn't quite expecting the Hyperproc at that time. Maybe a misplay out of Long towards the top side. Anytime you die 1v1, it has to be a misplay. Yeah, that's a good point. Flandre has been able to get, a, get these 1v1 kills in the past. Now sits on 2, 1, and 0, going towards what looks like a frozen mallet for item number 1. And first turret is going to fall in favor of Snake. 
And that's a 3.5 thousand gold lead. Easy Hoon taking some damage from Tank here in the mid lane. And a Nether Grasp on the bottom side. Arrow to follow up as Caveman is going to get eaten by GZ. Spat out and Crystal grabs his third kill. And this is just disaster across the map for Vici. Yes, they play so well when they're ahead but they completely fall apart at the seams when they're behind. They don't have the individual talent for 3v3s or 5v5s to fight from deficits. Well, there's the Abyssal Voyage. Endless does use his spell shield, gets himself out of the way. So we'll be fine. And so FM started off this dragon. You mentioned the fact that neutral control is something that this guy can do. He has to be careful, though. Dandy's sitting behind the pit. They're both level 9, so he has the same smite. Oh, Voidlings are going to be there. Jay-Z moving very fast with his mobility boots, and SOFM locks down the dragon. Dandy slowed, but does get himself out. And now every single objective falling in Snake's favor, getting that first blood on the tower. Always incredibly important right now. We've kind of seen the trend on 6.15 to prioritize wave control and pushing power, open up space for junglers. So I feel like Snake in a very healthy position on the current patch. It kind of boasts their natural play style. They're also one of the few teams that have been experimenting with cheeky level ones. A lot uh, of the other LPL teams have just kind of been sitting back on uh, defensive fans. Yeah. I've actually wanted to sort of go through and discuss this at the same time with like what the the new things that are going to come out of this 6.15 patch are just because there aren't these lane swaps that those level ones no longer to happen Let's see what the new default is going to be is easy here and just tanks up an ultimate from tank but not going to be quite enough the athenes on holy grail saves his life but he will be shoved out of lane which means uh, that he's either going to be forced to burn his tp or he will have to lose a wave that's being shoved into his tower well, Tank going to make short work of what was the minion wave. Dark Sphere, pretty good at that. But Teleport is going to save the cannon creep for the moment. Oh, actually, no. Okay, that was interesting. So the Teleport still works, but you can still pick up the minion. <laughs> That's very strange. Lung going to get walloped here towards the top side as Flandre doing so much work. The permaslow of the Frozen Mallets there. Flash has to be used. And the clock tower dodged here from Long, but he's in trouble on the top side. And every single lane is really bleeding out. And Dandy can only be so many places at once. He was actually trying to manufacture some sort of play mid uh, with that TP advantage, seeing if Cinder would step forward and try to punish Easy Hoon. He was around the corner looking for a cask. But Snake just playing cleaner and smarter individually in their lanes. Yeah, and that's going to spell a tower on the top side of the map. Now Caveman and Endless look to try and take down a Krug camp, but this is SOFM's favorite camp. <laughs> but no, moving towards the mid lane. Nice stun there out of tank. Easy who shields up a lot of that damage. And we're coming to a point where uh, Snake are going to look to dive this mid lane or at least try what? to break the freeze. Mininar is very skinny because Dandy, I swear, hit that body slam. Right through him. Yeah. Oh. Sneaky devil. Well, I mean, he's a bit weasley. <laughs> Hard to lock down. <laughs> Does make a bit of sense. Is Crystal now going to utilize this brand new Renan's Hurricane to take down this bottom lane in a turret if he can? Meanwhile, Snake pressuring here in the mid lane as well. It's a multi-pronged attack, and Snake just looks so much better today. And the issue is, is that there's no caveman here to help stall out this uh, siege. In fact, he's caught out now. Yeah, Nethergrass going to come down. He goes down to about half health, flashes the arrow, which is definitely good news. An explosive cast lands on the only tank. Vici have got all five members down here after the teleport as Flandre holds onto his. Long's going to have a choke point. Yeah, Snake just trying to see whether they can oh, get nice. out. Really good scout of the week from tank. As SOFM, found on his own, does have Flash, uses it to get out of the way, but Dandy, oh, went for the Flash Body Slam, but doesn't get it. Yeah, and unfortunately doesn't have the cask. He used it at the very beginning of that engagement, so can't follow up on the Flash over the wall, and great disengage from Snake. They got a ton of chip damage on that bottom inner turret. It's about 25% left. Yeah, and really good communication as well, because Flandre, he had his teleport. He could have come down if they wanted to get into that engage, but Snake decided from the very beginning, we want to disengage. Take control once again. Flandre, get yourself further ahead. Now pushes this wave into the inner turret. And you brought up this idea that Snake are looking so much better today than they did in their playoff run. 100% have to agree with that. But at the same time, Snake also came out swinging against Aime in game number one and then completely fell apart. So, You know my thing, Frosker, and I like to speak too soon. Snake I was fans. well and truly on the Invictus Gaming hype train, and that did not end well. 
I think you were well and truly on the IG hype, or excuse me, LGD hype train as well. Yeah. In fact, I was on that one. In fact, if there's a train leaving a station, I'm just happy to jump on as quickly as possible. As Tank down here on the bottom side of the map just clears out the minion wave. Bit of a 1-3-1 situation happening as SOFM's going to go back to base. We'll see what he decides to pick up next. He's got a cheeky little sapphire crystal that he's just going to sell and head towards his Merlin Omicron as item number two after that Rooney Kekos. And that is one of the nice things about um, Malzahar, especially in the jungle position. A lot of junglers have to really change their core itemization between, you know, jungle champion versus lane champion yeah. just because they don't get the same amount of gold as a lane champion will. Uh, Malzahar, because his build is so cost efficient, really that power spike coming at Morello's and then uh, Rylai's is going to not really be inhibited by the lack of gold that he gets in the jungle position. He's still going to reach that big two-item mid-game power spike, no problem. Yeah, I actually really like it. As you can see, Tank as well. He's going for the Proto Belt Syndra, which I absolutely love. Adding more mobility to relatively stationary champions is definitely a good idea. We saw Izihun, in fact, be the one to start off with the Proto Belt Lissandra. Added mobility to a champion that was already pretty mobile. And it works really, really well. We'll see how it goes this time. This crystal with his new Infinity Edge is going to take down the enemy red buff. And it's the same play for Snake back to back. They're just going to continue to apply pressure between the mid and bottom and then either take down these towers for free as Flandre just did in the bottom side or catch Vici cheating through their jungle to try to get to these building creep waves. And at the moment, I mean, towers were traded, but inner turret for outer is, feels like it's still in favor of Snake and they get round here to the mid lane. Good arrow lands onto Easy Hoon, but no follow-up available. But this is going to be the hard part, is breaking this mid lane. So uh, the thing about Malzahar is that he can chip siege damage really well, but they're really reliant on either grabbing that Nethergrass or hitting that Scatter the Weak. Well, speaking of Nethergrass, Dandy going to get stunned up. Nice empowered Q, though, comes in from Easy Hoon. As Caveman going down so low, he will fall to Crystal, whose auto attacks are really starting to hurt. The rest of Vici do now try and disengage. Flandre looking for a flank. Hold on. Ooh, time wind up. Just boomerangs being exchanged here across the board, but out of tower falls down. And there's no reason for Vici to be there. So they had completely diffused any sort of push that Snake could have fronted on that last standing mid outer. Yeah. But by overextending and getting caught, Caveman really being the, uh, the suspect there, they go ahead and, and drop the tower. So Vici just effectively losing faster. Yeah, an easy... Uh, sorry, Caveman falling down means that he's not going to be there for a 5v5 around this dragon. Another free one goes over to Snake. Because Snake are so reliant on picks to siege with this composition. You have Braum, you have Sivir, you have Karma and Gragas. You have so many abilities to augment or to delay sieging of structures. But if you get caught in the middle of nowhere... You're going to die. It's just uh, no reason for that to have happened. Big mistake. Yeah, the beauty is, is that, you know, this Baron... Definitely going to be an option here for Snake, especially with SOFM. The pros that you do get out of a Malzahar definitely apply, whether he's in the mid lane, top lane, or jungle. And you have to think that if this kind of gimmick pick for Snake will have to be uh, punished and change Vici's draft, and you know, the fact that they priority picked their jungle relatively early in the draft, if maybe they're going to have to sit back or look more towards that Elise, something that can punish Malzahar a bit easier than Gragas to threaten Snake from pulling this maneuver again. Yeah. But item spikes across the board here for Snake as Black Cleaver is completed for Flandre. Split pushing build most certainly online. Proto Belt done for Tank at the same time. And there's the Merlinomicon like we were talking about for SOFM. And Flandre has been the highlight of Snake throughout their playoff bracket. His split performance was a bit questionable, kind of slumping, falling off from that big rookie all-star performance that he had when he entered the LPL. But he's certainly come back with a vengeance. And I like to see him go for that split-pushing, carry-oriented NAR build because I believe he's in the right form to do so. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you were watching the I'm a Snake series, his gangplank almost single-handedly brought them back in one of those games. Unfortunately, wasn't the case. As he's now hunting for members of Vici. Jay-Z doing the same thing, almost towards his locket of the Iron Solari. So right now, Snake have a window of opportunity where we can play towards the top side of the map, where we can look to try to burn rush this Baron, which is why it's very important that Vici had control of that Scuttle Crab. But what they should be doing is bouncing between trying to chip on the inner top and mid turret. If they find a big sizable pick by moving in Triangle Vision into Vici's blue buff, they can then immediately translate into Baron. They have so much control with that Malzahar and then just wait for the dragon spawn, continue to bleed Vici of objectives. Oh, Caveman, he's just going to get Nethergrass. There's the ultimate. Easy Hoon arrowed from the backside, and Caveman is going to be able to be taken down by Snake. Good pick. 
but still not the pick that they're looking for to pull the trigger on the Baron confidently. Well, Snake just going to return to the minion waves, take them down, and it is going to be Soul Vision available here of the area by the Snake roster. But big problem is, is that they burned a lot of key cooldowns. They don't have Arrow, they don't have Malzahar Ultimate. They're going to try to burn this anyway, but Vici can stop them. Oh, bring the Voidlings in, SOFM, as this Baron is going down very, very low. Jay-Z trying to play Keeper, as Endless has a lot of damage to deal. SOFM locks down the Baron. The exhaust on a dandy to stop him from getting in, as the Chrono Break is used to get Lung out of there. Crystal takes a lot of damage, but that is a definite free Baron for Snake. Disaster. They should have gotten Long in there on the earlier TP. Vici, just so cautious, so respectful. Just run in. You know that they're going to turn on the Baron. You can't afford. They had so many tools that they could have stopped that. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was still a 4v5. Vici, a team that is known to play patient. They don't want to take a fight that they can't win. It doesn't matter if it's a 4v5 because it's so early in the game. Yeah. Snake was still hemorrhaging a ton of health and very low. And more importantly, you still had the cask available from Dandy. Not necessarily to look for a steal, but at least to clear them from the pit and dissuade them. All you had to do was stop them there because of how early in the game it is. But that just two-second hesitation was the difference between giving Snake enough time to burn it. Oh, now Snake actually going back to base with those Empowered Recalls. We've got a Phantom Dancer for Crystal who's pushing out this top wave. He does a lot of damage and he's very maneuverable. Now with two movement speed items and boots too. Four zero and 2 at the same time. If you're talking about, you know, a, a reappearance in the LPL, this is exactly what you want out of the Snake AD carry. I mean, Snake looked great right now. It's Vici that's kind of the big question mark. Yeah. They looked fantastic in their playoff run. They looked great in their loss to Team WE despite dropping out of the playoffs. And they come back in here and they look just completely lost. A little bit of a mess as the arrow lands on the caveman. Once again, going to get picked off as the Nethergrass comes through. Dandy nice ultimate flank. to try and get the re engages. Dandy still has the Banshee's Veil. There it gets popped as Jay Z flashes out of the way of the body slam. Endless taking a lot of damage as SOFM right in the back line in a lot of trouble. But Tank takes down Endless Long uses the ult to get himself back in, but it's not enough. Crystal grabs that kill. Now Dandy, Easy Hoon, and Caveman on the run, but there's the Nara and the Caveman. Good stand behind me. Gets him out of the way, but Snake have got in amongst it. The Proto Belt kill onto the support for Tank. That is the style points, and that's going to be the inhibitor turret. And Tank did so much work that fight, initially zoning out Dandy and making sure that he can't get the perfect flank. When Vici did find success against Team WE, it was off the back of Dandy setting up and executing on these 5v5s with champions like Gragas and champions like Hecarim. Dandy not only completely whiffed his cast, but he had to back out of the initial engage because of tank zoning. Well, you can see Snake actually want to try and take down the game here. They decide in the end that it's not going to be available. Jay-Z going to try and spit the ash <laughs> over the wall, but doesn't quite find it. So he just threw her face first into the wall. I like that. You need, you need to go through the trial and error, error before you understand you which know, walls you can spit people she's over. She's just a bit too heavy right now, a bit too fed. <laughs> 5 0 and 3 is like, Look ash. at how many swords and bows and things she's got. I think you need to cut back a little bit on the cake. Yep, something like that. Okay, so, oh... Dandy's already tried. Oh, no, here we go. So yep. Dandy right now is on the right side of your screen. He's going to come in. They're going to immediately pop the Banshee Veil. And he pops it without burning the Scatter of the Week. So Dandy has to step back. And then he's stunned up, has to reset his position. He still sits on the cask. He eventually gets to throw it way too late. The fight's pretty much already done. And he doesn't hit anyone with it. He just bounces one member of Snake kind of back into a wall. And unfortunately, I mean, Endless used his flash. But that Unleashed Power was already there. And in goes Tank with the Flash Proto Belt. Such a good combo. And I've always loved Syndra. A lot of LPL mid laners uh, are secret, sneaky Syndra one tricks. <laughs> I'm thinking Wayless when yeah, you say that. Wayless definitely debuting the champion back into the LPL, known for his Syndra pick. Uh, so to see Tank pick it up, I want to see Syndra Nami. The beautiful thing about Syndra is she has so much disengage, hard engage, uh, Burst damage, now great mobility when you itemize her into Proto Belt. She's got too much good stuff on one kit. Yeah. Nami actually pretty similar in that department. Yeah, she's pretty much the aggressive and offensive Nami, which is why it used to be a big thing to pick Syndra and Nami because pretty much no one can engage or disengage away from you. Yeah, and able to give one member movement speed. Nami is also phenomenal in helping winning uh, 2v2 lanes. I'm actually really surprised that she hasn't re-emerged in the LPL bottom side. Uh, LPL supports have really never big, been big Nami players, but I think she's actually in a really healthy spot. Well, we'll see whether Jay-Z can move over to it maybe next time because Nami Ash is also a pretty ridiculous lane. They won't play. Uh, Kench is just much more the LPL style as well as the double TP and semi-global meta being dandy. in control. 
Arrow going to come through, but it's not going to last too long. The SOFM gets eaten up. Flandre with a really good timing on the Mega Nar, but they're unable to find the engagement. So they're just waiting for Super Creeps to become too much of a problem on the top side. Baron going to net a 4,000 gold income there for Snake, but it's 11 kills to 1. Close to a 10,000 gold lead. Only 100 gold away, in fact, and there it is. Is now Snake setting themselves up for the Siege while Endless tries to clear out the Supers on the top. And Vici just looks so uncomfortable playing from behind. Again, this team really struggles in their skirmish and 5v5 ability. They almost completely rely on having dominating early games to create gold deficits to bridge them through lackluster 5v5s. Uh, likewise, Endless, he is not the same player on a champion like Sivir as he is his Kogma. Yeah. Really has sort of switched his identity, has Endless. Now Snake looking brilliant. Might have just been the fact that Crystal has found himself some form because it's been difficult for Endless to find any sort of foot into this game. Regardless. Dominating lane presence with hyper carries running around. Crystal's like, sign me up. Yeah, exactly. I want to see his Twitch next game, please, Frosker. And if you could put that one in, uh, in my wish list book. I'm still just very hesitant to kind of build up Snake, to get on that hype train. Yes, it's a best of three, so it puts them, you know, game set point if they close this out. Do you know what happens if there's a dominant game one, though, Frosker? And I mean, you were casting yesterday, I believe. Completely fall apart in game two. <laughs> I've seen my this heart. movie before. <laughs> now Caveman and Easy Hoon together farming things up in the mid lane. Lung finds some respite on the bottom side of the map as Snake all decide to head home, grab themselves some more items. It's a last whisper completed for Crystal. Lock at the Iron Solari there for Jay-Z. You've got a dead man's plate done for Flandre. It's Big almost, Gnar. Yeah, like Assassin Gnar style at the moment. Uh, that Baron spawning in 30 seconds. Good job, Dandy, making sure that we can't let them burn it again. Let's grab the Scuttle Crab so we, at least we have some control over this area. Grab us a quick cheeky back here and try to meet on even footing or as even as we can for this incoming 5v5. That said, Snake probably going to try to pull a very similar scenario. Shove the top and mid waves. Uh, make sure that at least the bottom wave is at least neutralized or slow pushing towards Vici and look for a pick. Well, you can see, thankfully for Vici, that inhibitor is going to come back up very soon. Baron has respawned, but you can see Snake just milling about on this permanent vision. Well, you know, immovable vision that VG were able to provide for themselves. I think VG actually have a slow push bottom. I wish the camera would go down there so no, I they could do. count. Long was able to set that one up. Yep, so someone on Snake eventually will have to respond to that. In fact, they don't even care about the Skittle Crab. They've got the Malzahar. They're trying to burn this. Yeah, it's already down to half health, but they do disengage away. Dandy's going to be the focus, and he gets destroyed as Flandre has the Mega Nar in the background. Endless caught up by the top laner as Tank takes down Caveman. Lung now running away, but he gets stunned by the Scout of the Week. Gets himself out of the way with a Chrono Break, but Flandre's just a monster. Easy Hoon can't do anything. And Jay-Z takes down Long. The Flash from Crystal as he's trying to get on top of Easy and the Tongue Lash is going to be there. Oh my goodness, again, Tank is having the series of his life, and that's the ace. And that's going to be the game for Snake. Vici, they have to go back to the drawing board. You have to look at draft phase. Across the board, their laners just organically lost. Snake just had the better players. SOFM had the better jungle pressure. And Dandy can't stop the bleeding if it's happening in every single lane. Yeah, and he, he was forced to try and go for that Baron steal because, my God, it went down so incredibly quickly. Snake now going to deal with this last remaining Nexus turret. Caveman and Dandy are here. Explosive cast used gets rid of the Ash. But it's still going to be the end of the turret, and that is going to be the Nexus falling down. Dandy gets Nether Grasped, and Tank grabs the kill. Game one will go to Snake in this best of three series, and domination ensued. But the question is always how much do Tank or how much do Snake have left in the tank? Ha ha. Yeah. They typically run out of fuel. Uh, that's what happened for them in the playoffs. So we'll see if they can continue this dominant form. I have to suspect that Dandy's going to move away from something like the Gragas, at least try to punish the Malzahar pick by either banning it or picking up an Elise so that if SOFM does try this trick again, Dandy has the weapons to look for counter-invading. Yeah, and of course, Snake, this is a best of three series, so a different story a little bit from the best of fives we saw yesterday. So we are going to have a look at this phenomenal play from Crystal. Oh my goodness. Welcome back.
Because that was brilliant. And this is the biggest issue for VG. You should not lose this. Dandy having the confidence in his team, you know, I've just popped Ash back into two people. All you have to do is make sure that that concussive blows procs on her and kill her. And his team failed him there. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, you then have a solo kill where Flandre just mows down long. That's two straight misplays on a uh, micro and decision level. Dandy has no part in that. What, what are you going to do? Yeah, and I mean, now the, the tank show comes in as his team fighting was on point this series. Vici thought they had the flank, but they just flat out didn't. Look at that scat of the week on both the jungle and AD carry. And Endless just can't get out of the way of that ultimate. And Tank playing phenomenally on the Cinder. The fact that he pops the Banshee Veil with a cheeky Q as Dandy's coming in and then make sure that he locks him down to delay that cask for as long as possible. Brilliant play, and that's what I like to see out of Syndra. Uh, LPL teams are really well known for their ability to control fights around terrain. Snake, one of the weaker 5v5 teams, but Syndra is compensating for that a lot with just her uh, increased control with Scout of the Week now that she's able to throw more orbs. Yeah, and Snake actually just looking brilliant in most of these late game team fights. Of course, they had a heck of a lot more money, but how they were playing it out was what really impressed me. Yeah, they also have that 10k gold deficit and they're facing Vici Gaming, a team not known for their 5v5, so it does make Snake look a bit better. That is a very good point. I do want to talk a little bit about Crystal and Jay-Z towards the bottom side of the map, because when they were playing together, of course, when they did lose their, their former support, Jay-Z comes in and you think better support, but didn't look as good with Crystal. We saw in that first highlight, that was brilliant. The synergy between the two of them, saving the flash, getting into the Tom Kench's mouth, just stunning. And it comes back to this idea that Snake have been really patched into power on 6.15. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off for them in the playoffs, but this ability of having isolated 2v2 and 1v1 lanes with Crystal back on the lineup, they look much stronger. They most certainly do. But ladies and gentlemen, we are going to throw to a short break. When we get back, we'll see whether Snake can do it again or whether Vici can fight back.